All right, we're back with Sports Talk J. Talking a little Tennessee NC State this weekend, a ranked matchup. Although, after watching North Carolina State last week, having a little bit of a scare with Western Carolina, I don't, you know, they're maybe they're lucky to even still be ranked at this point. But let's talk a little first about uh, Tennessee's win last week. Nico looked pretty good. Obviously, you're playing Chattanooga. Like, you're playing a team that you need to do exactly what they did too. But it's hard to take things away from games like that, Jay. But, it, you know, thoughts after that did, were you able to were you encouraged at all is there anything you're concerned about coming off of the win I mean I know you won by a billion but it, it's hard to get much out of those FCS opponents yeah uh, it just confirmed what I knew about Nico um, a lot of people were trying to say well he only threw for like under 200 yards in that bowl game and I was like he was the MVP he scored four touchdowns <laughs> and he got sacked six times because we had three guys that had opted out for injury and etc and he didn't throw a single wide uh, interception. So I was like, I just want to see him uh, connect for, you know, a few hundred yards and just prove what I already know, which he did immediately, yeah. immediately. Within 20 minutes, he had 300 yards. And I was like, three touchdowns. Okay, get him out. Just get yeah. him out. We don't need to see any more. Let's, uh, let's go to the NC State game. And that's, you know, it is what it is. So NC State this weekend um, opened up at a four-point spread. It's up to eight now. And uh, ESPN says that you guys have an 87.9% chance to win it. I know that's kind of rat poison, as Lane Kiffin likes to say. Um, still a talented team, but Grayson McCall doesn't look great. What, what about NC State does worry you, though? The only thing that concerns me is our, uh, our secondary. That's been our weak link. Our, uh, our nemesis really has been our – we just can't stop the pass. We can stop the run. They'll, they'll not run on us. They just won't. They'll get – 90 yards, something like that on the ground if they're fortunate. But Grayson McCall, if he plays like he did at Coastal Carolina the first couple of years there, he could get a lot of yards. He could get 300, 350, something like that. And, and he's got some wide receivers. That Concepcion guy is excellent. Yeah, he's, he's really, he's really good. Got another guy by the name of Hollywood that is kind of an all-purpose dude, running back, wide receiver. That's another guy that could give us uh, fits in the secondary – that's my only concern there. We're going to score. We, we, we'll score. That's not a problem. Uh, I don't think they can stop us. They, they're going to try to stop the run, which is what they should do. And if they put eight in the box, we'll kill them. So they can't do that. They're going to have to put six in the box. So we'll get our 150, 200 yards rushing, no, no trouble. It's just uh, they need Nico to have an off night. That's what needs to happen. Nico needs to have an off night, and McCall needs to be the guy he was two years ago. Which, you know, Nico's young, and, and I know that, you know, he, he looked really good last week. A, a step up in competition for sure. Um, you mentioned Concepcion. Having nine receptions, three touchdowns last week, like he is he is something special. Like he's one of the better wide receivers in the country. My, my concern for NC State, though, is, is can Grayson be that guy? I don't think he looked incredibly sharp last week. Now, you know, there eventually becomes a time where you're just that much better than, uh, you know, who did they play? Um Western Carolina, yeah. you know, at that point, you just, you're thinking you can, you know, you're thinking you can eventually just will your way to a win there. Um, going away from Knoxville, uh, obviously it's a neutral side game as opposed to being a, uh, a true road game. So even that like advantage, I feel like is gone for NC state and, and helps Tennessee a ton. Um, what are the, uh, what are the ramifications if Tennessee's not able to get this one? Is everybody just – is there a meltdown? Like, what are the thoughts around it? There'll be shock. There'll they'll definitely be shock in Knoxville. Something will have to happen. We'll have to turn the ball over at least three times, I would think. McCall will have to have a great game. Uh, we'll have a meltdown about our secondary if we lose because that'll be the case. Nico, I just can't see – you know, unless he were to, you know, have a, a mishap of some sort, he's going to play well. I've, I've seen him. He started two ball games. He's been the MVP in both. And one was against a top 10 defense. So I, that's not normal. Quarterbacks don't do that in their first game. Most of them struggle yeah. unless they're really elite. And that's that's what this kid is. He's elite. And he's got the wide receivers we've got are just an embarrassment of riches, honestly. It's one of the best receiving groups I've seen Tennessee have in a long time. And running backs were – we're just good everywhere on offense, and we're good on the defensive line and, and, and the special teams. We've got one weakness, and I look, we have brought in a bunch of four stars and a bunch of all-conference guys, but 
we've got battered ball syndrome from that secondary. We're all tore up about it, and we don't trust it until we see it. And that's the one place where we're weak. And if they'll hit that hard, that gives them a chance in this game. That gives them a fighting chance. They'll have no home field advantage because we travel fantastically. There's tickets available, which means we're buying tickets. I don't, it'll probably be worst case scenario to be 50, 50 as far as fan bases. Yeah. Maybe even worse though. 60, I could see 60, 40 Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, without, and it's in their home state. Yeah. Without blinking my eyes. They, they, you know, NC state's crowd has always been fairly good. Like I've been to games where, you know, they've, they've come to tally and stuff and they've done a good job, but yeah, I, I, I don't they ain't like Tennessee fans traveling. Um, and I, you know, they, they certainly don't have as large of a fan base either, you know, which, which contributes to it. What yeah. about, um, all right, so we'll come back to talk about the Tennessee State game and, and we'll wrap up there in just a minute. But um, you, we've talked a lot about the, uh, the Florida curse. And, uh, you know, it's certainly been more of a curse down in Gainesville. But, uh, man, watching them on, on Saturday, do you think that, are, are you less nervous about that game? Is it possible for you to be less nervous about the game against Florida or – you think Miami's just that good, or where do you think about them? I could see Florida. I wish it was – I always want our game to be later in the season because occasionally Florida, their, their team will just quit on them. If they get things going bad, this is a team that's loaded. But they'll go 4-8 and eight on you like that if things aren't going right. They've, I've seen them quit on McIlwain. They quit on the guy from Mississippi State. Uh, Mullen they're, Muschamp. Yeah, they're, that. yeah they're, that's right. And they're going to quit on uh, – I think they may have already quit on Napier. We'll see. Miami was really good. They had a great quarterback, uh, Cam Ward, who y'all should have got. That was a monster mistake not to get that guy. You should have just paid whatever it took. Now, of course, that's hindsight. But um, I don't think Florida's as bad as everybody thinks they are. they got a ton of talent, um, as good as – probably as good as what we've got in many respects – but their motivation is terrible. Um, Napier is not doing a good job of motivating them. I can't believe they went down there and whooped them in the swamp like that. That crowd was whipped up. I mean, you were there. That was a wild crowd at 3.30. Yeah. In that heat, I mean, it was intimidating, honestly. It, it sure was awesome. It. Yeah, and that's what I've told people. If you would have told me. That's why I went. My team wasn't, and I could have just already been up at a bar watching all the rest of the game. If you'd have told me it's going to be a 30 point game, or I guess it finished at 24, <clears throat> but if you'd have told me it's going to be a blowout, um, the crowd's never going to get into it, it's not going to be fun, and you're not going to be able to watch all the other college football games that are going on that day, I wouldn't even have gone. Like, what's fun about the swamp is going and feeling the swamp, and they had nothing to cheer for. There was nothing to be excited about, minus one long touchdown run. And so, yeah, I agree. They play uh, Sanford this weekend, and uh, it'll it'll really come down to nothing matters there. I mean, Lagway's starting because the merch is in concussion protocol, but nobody will care. They could win that by 70. Nobody cares. It'll come down to what happens against A&M. And A&M's defense looked really good against Notre Dame. So I, I, I'm i afraid if they start out 0-2 against real competition, or so 1-2 and overall, they lose to A&M next week. I, I think that's the writings on the wall that that's it for, for, for Napier. Yeah, you're, you may be right. Uh, I don't think they'll fire him right away, but at some point, you know, it takes a little bit of time on that. I mean, yeah. maybe six week six, week seven, week eight, something like that. They'll let him go, depending on how bad it gets. Now they might beat Mississippi State, which is their next game, but then they've got like Kentucky and U UCF, Kentucky, and Tennessee, and then of course the gauntlet. Yeah. So at some point, if, if he makes it into the gauntlet, I'm almost a little bit surprised, but somewhere in that gauntlet is where you want to let him go. If I was the AD, I'd wait until the gauntlet and say, let him, let Georgia just pound him, just pound him by 40 points. Let him go right after that. That's what they did with McIlwain. That's when, that's when they let him go was after, and there was other stuff going off, off the field too. But yeah, they, they lost by a billion to Georgia. And then it was like, all right, well that, you know, that's enough of that. You know, you can kind of save your season if you win that. So, all right, transitioning right back to your team. Um, and then we'll, we'll get out of here. We talked about, you know, I know you feel really confident. Um, do you have a lean? Do you have a score? Have you done a score prediction yet? Do you have one that we'll do? I, I went with 37-24. I think NC State's going to score on us. I just do. I think they'll get 20 points, 24 points, something like that. I would expect us to get in the mid to high 30s. If things go really well for us, we might get into the 40s. I don't think anything more than that. If we're in the 20s, we got a ball game. Yeah. If we're in the 20s, we got a ball game. Um, I want to get you back uh, 
Oklahoma week, which is in what two weeks from now. Because I do think that's going to be one of the well, one of the one a, of the bigger ones. That's wow. a big game. Man. That's a big one, man. At home, you know. I honestly, we uh, I think we played Cal that weekend, and I don't know that I could stomach a loss to a, a West Coast ACC team. And so maybe I'll just try and find way a way to get up to Knoxville that weekend instead of uh, instead of doing anything else. Because I I do. I mean, you play Alabama, you play Georgia, and those are incredibly tough. But it almost feels like if they if they beat Oklahoma, they could lose those other two and still make the playoff, you know? And so that, that kind of be, I don't know. I'm not to do a full season preview right here, but I just, I think that game's going to be just so massive for Tennessee. Um, yeah. I mean, if you go 10 and two in the sec, I mean, I think you're certainly in, um, but yeah, that, but same thing for Oklahoma, they got to play Texas. They got to play, you know, a lot of good teams. And so they, they need that win as well. Um, so yeah, I think that game's going to be just absolutely electric in Knoxville this year. And, like I said, I need to find a way to sneak up there. You no, know, there, there's a lot of adi- additional uh, emphasis in that game because Josh Heupel's returning. Yeah, sure. The national champion is returning, runner-up in the Heisman, and he got fired by Oklahoma. Yeah. Fired as an offensive coordinator because he, he couldn't figure out a way to score. <laughs> well, doesn't have that problem now, it seems. Jay, where can, uh, where can people follow you? Where can they find your work? Uh, I'm at Sports Talk Jay on YouTube. That's about it. I don't, awesome. I don't go on a whole lot of much of anything else. I just enjoy doing the ju- uh, YouTube stuff. Skip all the rest of it. I've, I've found the people on, you know, I, I'm, and I'm on everything else. I found the people on YouTube are a little more like kind. Like I get Miami fans like sending me death threats on Twitter and on YouTube. They're like, man, this was a really good thoughtful analysis you had here. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah they're, they're a lot more kind on YouTube than they are on Twitter. There's some crazy. Well, that is. I, I can tell you, I, I was looking, I, I'm thinking about doing a video on mean comments and I went, <laughs> Because I thought it'd be fun, and I would respond to it, you know, and try to do it the way I like to do things. And I, I struggled finding anything that was really I could work. It was amazing. It's like, why in the world Florida fans ought to be killing me right now? Yeah, they well, should be wearing been, me out. They've been right. neutered. They've been neutered at this moment, brother. Like, <laughs> um, I think I'll tell you why. I think it's a little bit of an older demographic. I think my Twitter yeah. demographic skews from like. 16 to 40 and my youtube demographic is more like 35 to 55 and so people aren't you know you you eventually grow up and you're not sending death threats over to, over yeah, football that's... games you know but when you're 18 this stuff is like uh, yeah i'll kill your whole family if my team loses <laughs> next when you're 30 you start to get out of that a little bit i think <laughs> yeah, my uh my demographic's over 50 i'll go ahead and tell you i've i've looked at it I have a very, very older uh, demographic, and they're incredibly kind to me, which just shocks me. Occasionally, I'll get I'll, somebody will put a negative comment, and there'll be like ten people that'll jump that person. jump on them. Yeah, it's people, amazing. It's like I, yeah. I deserve to take crap because <laughs> I get a lot of crap, but for some reason they they've been reasonable. Now, if I got on Twitter, you're probably right. I'd probably get death threats. People are people are the worst over there. I wish I could delete it. So. Yeah. Uh, Jay, your, your audience does do a great job. Anytime we do content, they, they always are coming and, and super supportive. So you've done a good job building that, building that for sure. So, well, we, man, we appreciate you. Good luck this weekend and uh, go get after it. Good. See you, man. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Bye-bye.